you kill Sir Gregory? Tis a little hard. I'm taking your law in my own hands, Tardis. This gun is loaded and you're gonna die. <laughs> no, what's happened? I have a warrant for your arrest. That, my dear Mrs. O'Connor, is a tape recording machine. And you've been listening to part of my new radio serial, The Adventures of the Hawk. Pretty good, huh? Sorry, I knew it was something of the kind. You never had them contraptions when your wife was living with you, so you didn't. We couldn't afford it then. And I'd like some coffee. Oh, coffee, is it now? Well, just a moment. You haven't been hearing from my wife, have you? Oh, indeed, I have not. And why would I? Oh, nothing. Just wonder whether perhaps she'd written to you. Or ask how I was getting along. Ah, she'd have more to do with her time. No way for a young married couple to be. Yourself living here like a hermit. And that poor sweet lamb, secretarian for some other man. Disgusting. There are two sides to it, you know. You were temperamentally unsuited. That's the modern name for selfishness. So we're better apart. You tried it for two years, Mrs. O'Connor, and it didn't work. Two years? Well, our interests lie apart. And I'll get my own coffee. Oh, sure, and you're welcome. I'll go and straighten up in there. Well, don't tidy my desk. It is beyond it. And the coffee pot's broke. Good. I'll make it in a jug, if I can find one. Oh, answer it, will you, Mrs. O'Connor? Say I'm not at home. Take a message. I'm not at home. Tis you she's wanted, and the voice of her like a harp. No good will come of this. Here he is, madam. He's just coming home. Hello? Oh, hello, Louis. Nice of you to ring, at last. I'm sorry to disturb you, Colin. I'm sure you must be up to your eyes in work. But I had to call you. Oh, you're all right, aren't you? You're not ill or anything? Oh, no, 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 I'm all right. Listen, Colin, where are the worried? Well, my boss has disappeared. Disappeared? When? Oh. Well, have you told the police? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, Mrs. Durant wants you here desperately. She's one of your fans. She reads all your books and listens to all your radio plays. Anyway, she feels, quite rightly, there must be some kind of explanation. Please come. Well, if you really think so. Didn't know anyone took my books seriously. Silly mutt, aren't you? Oh, Louis, can he come? He's leaving at once. That is good of him. I have a tremendous respect for his intelligence. One gets that from his books. Well, I know he's trying to help. I feel much happier if you let me call the police. No, not unless it's absolutely necessary. You see, I'm hoping that your husband will find some reason for James's disappearance. After all, he could have lost his memory. Why? Well, I can't think of anything else. He had no worries. Or enemies? My dear, that's impossible. You should know that. Well, I haven't been here long. And with business interests as large as Mr. Durant's, he could have enemies and not know it. What are you suggesting? You think my husband's dead, don't you? Oh, no, Mrs. Durant, really, I huh? promise you. It's just my imagination. Oh, if I ever could hear something. Look, Colin can't get here under two hours. I'll go out myself. I'll go as far as the cliffs. Oh, thank you, dear. Didn't I know you'd never be able to resist the blarney of her. Be sure now and bring her back, would you? If anyone wants me, I'm at Mr. Durant's house, the old rectory, Withing Heath, Sussex. Telephone, Withing Heath, 254. She'll greet you at open hour. You read the wrong kind of books.
Snow's come back yet? No, I haven't seen her since she went out. But it's almost two hours. She was only going as far as the cliffs. Ma'am, I didn't sleep very well last night. Oh? I heard Master go out. He stopped under my window, talking. Talking? Talking to himself, angry-like. Did you hear what he said? No, ma'am, but I was awake for a long time, and I heard someone come in. I thought it was the Master. You must have been dreaming. Mrs. Knowles, please. I'm Mr. Knowles. I'm Mrs. Durant. Oh, how do you do? This is good of you. Please come in, won't you? Go ahead and take the suitcase upstairs. Is there any news of your husband? Not yet. And now your wife's disappeared as well. Disappeared, Louis? Yes, she said she'd go as far as the edge of the cliff to see if she could find any trace of my husband. It's less than half a mile away and she's been gone nearly two hours. Why the cliffs? It's my husband's usual walk, the way he took last night. You mean the way he said he would take? What do you mean? Well, you've no proof he actually went that way, have you? you? You think something dreadful's happened, don't you? Your wife does, too. Does she? Why? I can't imagine. There was no reason. My husband and I were so happy. Strange Louis should be away so long. Look, Mrs. Durant, what's your real objection to calling the police? No, no, I don't want them crying. Crying into there. what? Nothing. I... That's why I wanted you to come down, to see if you could find out in a discreet way what could have happened. You see, if the police come up... Louis, we're in here. Oh, hello, Carl. I'm glad you've come. The police had to haul me out. Police? What? Yes. Oh, it's Sergeant Lassett. I'm sorry I've been so long. I fell over the cliff. Oh, she was on a ledge about 25 foot down. Coast Guard saw her reported it to us. Yes, it happened when I was reaching for this cat. It's my husband. The young lady says your husband's missing. Is that so, madam? Yes, we're afraid so. He went out for a walk last night. He hasn't come back yet. Mr. Durant, secretary speaking. The Coast Guard station? Yes. Are you sure? You'd better speak to the police sergeant. Hello? Sergeant Bassett here. Right. Well, you better give me the particulars. Hold on a minute. They found him at the foot of the cliffs. He's dead. You've seen the body and identified as that of your husband? Yes. When did you last see him alive? About 11.30 last night, before he went for his usual walk along the cliffs. Was he in good spirits, not worried or angry? No. Mrs. Durand, I want to spare you as much as possible. But there may be some question that your husband's death wasn't accidental. The county police aren't satisfied at this stage. That's why I've come here from Scotland Yard. You're, you're not suggesting that he, he killed himself? Do you suggest he might have done? Oh, no, no. There is an alternative theory. Murder. Murder? Had he, to your knowledge, any enemies? But that's unthinkable. He was a kind and generous man. You were married about five years ago. He was a widower with one child. A daughter? Yes. How long had you known him before you were married? Only a few weeks. Were you a widow? Yes. And you know nothing of his earlier life? Only what he chose to tell me. Well, thank you, Mrs. Durant. I'm sorry you've had such an ordeal. Sergeant Bassett will send you home with one of our cars. I'll try not to worry you again before the inquest. Thank you. You've been most kind. Ah, oh, Mrs. Knowles and Mr. Knowles, please. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Do sit down. I believe you're here at the invitation of Mrs. Durant. Well, she seemed to think I could help. Why? Because he's quite well known as a mystery writer. Oh, I see. The brain of the criminologist rather than the brawn of the police, eh, Mrs. Knowles? Oh, well, why not? Mrs. Durant didn't want to bother the police. And so I gather. After all, that's what we're here for. And of course, it was a good opportunity to visit your wife. Well, wasn't it? I understand you haven't seen each other for quite some time. What's that got to do with it? Oh, I don't know. 
Two young married people living apart, different jobs, tough luck. Tougher still when it takes a murder to bring them together. A murder? What makes you think that? This. That was found in one of the dead man's pockets. Someone's lost a typewriter and found a face spot. What's the idea of sticking on all those letters? Blackmail. Disguised handwriting or a typewriter could be traced. Blackmail is an incentive to what? Murder? <laughs> Good Lord, no. Suicide. That's the last thing I'd expect. As secretary, you dealt with Mr. Durand's correspondence. Well, where's the letter that came in that? Well, how do I know? I've never seen that envelope before. But it came in the ordinary course of the post. Look at the postmark. Notting Hill Gate, 3.30, day before yesterday. Mr. Durand never showed it to me. Are you certain? Yes. Well, I'd hardly be likely to forget. Seems an unusual way of addressing a letter. So it's your theory that it was suicide following a blackmailing letter? Yes. And that Mr. Durant destroyed the letter, but not the envelope. Seems reasonable enough, don't you think? Well, it doesn't agree with the pathologist's report. Apart from injuries caused by his fall onto the rocks, there's evidence that Mr. Durant was stunned by a blow on the head. He was murdered. I know it. Look. I found these this morning on the cliffs, right at the spot where Mr. Durant went over. Was Durant a cigarette smoker? He didn't smoke at all. What are you trying to prove? That someone stood in that spot last night and smoked the last two in a ten packet. Could be that he was waiting for Mr. Durant. Well, that packet and those stuffs could have been there for days. Oh, no, they couldn't. There's been rain and the ground's been damp for ages. Jonah began to dry up last night. Now, these stubs are perfectly dry, fresh as smoke. Smell them. Yes, yes, give me the evidence. We'll peep into this. Ask Sergeant Bassett to step in, please. Just a little routine work. I hope you won't be bored, Mr. Knowles. Oh, Sergeant. Ah, honey flake. Don't see many of them, do you, sir? Well, that simplifies the whole thing. Does it, sir? It does. I want you to find out who bought that packet. Find out what, sir? Who bought them? Sometime yesterday, within a radius of ten miles. Ah. Well, that won't be easy, will it, sir? Well, I'll help you. You see those dents? Uh -huh. Well, they're made by the packing machine. Each wholesaler has a different set of marks. Trace the wholesaler and get a list of the shops he supplies in this district. Then check among the shopkeepers. I bet they don't sell many honey flakes. Well, I'll have a stab at it anyway. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. How long have you had this job with Mr. Durant? Ever since... just over a month. Ever since? Ever since what? Ever since we decided each to carry on with our own jobs. Colin needs all his time for his work. And it gets boring for a woman to be kept hanging around all the time. I mean, after all, it does happen. Of course. No particular interests in common. We prefer to think of it as temperamental maladjustment. Perfectly mutual and amicable. Oh, quite, quite. I believe they call it settling down. So, about a month ago, you left your husband and got a job as secretary to Mr. Durant. How did you like your boss? Very much. He was kind and considerate. Wealthy, comfortable surroundings, happily married. You'd say he had no worries. Well, naturally had some worries. Who <laughs> hasn't? Such as? Well. Green flower on the roses, or, or what was happening to Andrea. Andrea? The daughter? Yes. Well, why should she worry him? Well, she's on the stage. At least she is whenever she can get a job. Had one last year. But she doesn't have to work. Oh, no, that wasn't the worry. It was her engagement. He wasn't too happy about that. Oh, Miss Andrea. Where's my stepmother, Gwen? She's lying down, Miss. She was that upset when the police brought her back. I, I'll go up and tell her. Thank you. She must be upset, poor sweet. She adored Daddy. Yes. Yes, of course. I'm looking for a cigarette. That was that in the box. Oh, sure, it'll be plenty. This is one thing a real man didn't like. Always said I smoke too much. You do? The real thing, he was afraid you'd marry me and whisk me off to New Zealand. Hated the thought of losing me. Well, it's my home, my job, our future. Well, anyway, there can be no objections now. Let's make it soon, darling. Don't let's talk about it just yet. Whatever you say. But what's going to kill you of this stage bug? It's getting you nowhere. I was all ready to give it up. You know that, but... Now, Tony, please don't be angry, because I couldn't bear it at a time like this. You know, I played that small part in the charity show at the Critic Theatre. Well. 
George Malcolm was out in front. Who's he, another admirer? Don't be an ass. George Malcolm's a man who backs plays and gives unknown artists a chance to show what they can do. Well, several members of the company say he never took his eyes off me for the whole performance. I did wonder at that. I was only trying to make you understand. Let's give it, Joey. Oh, my dear. Tony? I'll take the kids. Must have been an accident. Well, what do the police think? Oh, I don't know. They don't say. They just ask questions and look as if they don't believe the answers. Andrea, must have been an accident. Oh, come, Mrs. Knowles. Most big businessmen make enemies, sometimes without knowing it. I wouldn't think Mr. Durant had any enemies. But you don't know. What I want you to do is to find out. What do you mean? Snoop among his private papers? Oh, you said yourself you believe he was murdered. Well, he might have been attacked by a thug. And not robbed. His watch and wallet were with him. Look, try to find the letter that came in that envelope. While you're looking for that, you might stumble across something else. You know what I think? This whole business may have started during his first marriage. You've got something there, Mr. Knowles. Now, you and your wife can work together on the inside. Hello? Now, get me Mrs. Durant at the home, please. If you get stuck for any particulars of the first marriage, contact me and I'll get them for you. Hello, Mrs. Durant? Well, Superintendent Simmons here. Look, I want Mr. and Mrs. Knowles to remain till after the inquest. I take it you can put them up. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye. She was expecting you to do that. She's made all arrangements for you to stay with them. Andrea's in your room, Louis, and Tony's in the other single room. So I do hope you and Colin will be comfortable in the double spare room. I'll turn the lights out when I come up. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. Mrs. Durant. She doesn't know anything about our private life. No. No, of course not. Anyway, don't let it worry you. You're modern enough to laugh at a little thing like this. Ashamed to intrude on your bachelor comfort. That's all right. The reason why you should spend a miserable night. stupid to make a thing about who sleeps where. After all, we do understand each other now. I wonder, do we? Of course we do. You know jolly well I wouldn't have come down here if you hadn't asked me. And you know jolly well it was Mrs. Durant who asked you, not me. Yes. Yes, I know. It hurts a bit. Then why not try lying with your legs over the end, hmm? I was merely trying to clear up the mess we made of our marriage. You know. We were trying to clear up the mess you made of your night's rest.
keeper's name was Abel, sir. Keeps a little store down in Chatford. I ran him down while he's having a pint in the bell. He says he sold a pack of honey flakes last night just before he closed. Oh, any description of the customer? Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. He's a fellow we knew quite well. Local? Well, not exactly, sir. He's a bit of a rolling stone. We call him Whistler Grant. He's casual in these parts. I'm doing an odd job here and there. Never any trouble. Sleeping rough? Mm, now and again, depending on the weather and <laughs> how much he's got in his pocket. Of course, he's usually got the price of a bed. He's a bit of a, a bit of a eccentric, I'd say, sir. You want to know where he is? I'd like to have a chat with him. Well, he should be pretty easy to find. I'll make some inquiries. Why do you call him Whistler? She fainted. What are you doing out of bed? I woke up hungry. I went to the larder. I had to go past the bedroom door. Seemed an odd time of night for anybody to be prowling about. Do you make a habit of this? Uh, no, ma'am. Only when I'm hungry. Oh, what's going on? Oh, nothing's the matter. It's perfectly all right. It's only Gwen. Hey, it's all right. It's only a false alarm. Are you sure? I've just seen somebody running like mad across the garden. What's that? It's in the study. <laughs> Oi, where's that? You got company? <coughs> Hello, Sarge. Been early for lunch, ain't you? I'm a gurney, no, you're on his land. I'm working for him. I'm scaring off the crows. Yeah. You want to take care and don't strain yourself? You'd be comical, of course. I want the wet, Sarge. You want it? Down the station. What's it? Uh, just a bit of information required, that's all. Anything in it? Maybe a packet of fags. Come in. You were seated at the desk, going through your late husband's papers, when you were overpowered and locked in the cupboard. Yes, I didn't go to bed. I felt that I wouldn't be able to sleep. Well, that's quite understandable. And you say you saw nothing of the man who attacked you? Oh, no. Crept up from behind. I didn't hear a sound. And you have no idea who it could have been? Oh, no. Or why he should have attacked you? No. You were bundled into the cupboard in a fainting condition, and you remember nothing further until Mr. Knowles let you out. No, nothing. What woke me up was a crash of crockery. You were all roused, yet not one of you heard anything of the attack on Mrs. Duran. That probably happened before we were roused. This man you saw running across the garden, can you give any description of him? Only what I've already told you, Inspector. 
He was running very fast in a sort of crouched attitude. It was only a shadow. I'm afraid I wasn't fully awake. Uh, it seems we shall have to wait for the next move. Take my advice, Mrs. Durant, and don't be downstairs alone at night. I have a feeling our unknown friend will communicate with you again. Oh, I nearly forgot. Look, here's another of those funny envelopes. What? That's addressed to you. May I open it? Yes, of course. Half the task is now complete. T'other half must be as neat. And that's all there is. <laughs> what the heck sense does that make? Oh. Oh. Mrs. Durant. No. No, leave me alone. Can you tell me what this letter means? No. <laughs> you better get her upstairs and try to calm her down. I'll talk to her later. Thank you. I think that would be better. <laughs> Why did you say you forgot this letter? Because I wanted to see that you got it unopened. When did it arrive and how? I found it in the letterbox this morning. Look, you can see for yourself it came by post. Someone's enjoying this little joke. On the face of it, I'd say it was a direct threat against Mrs. Durant. Why? And why not? Well, I was just wondering why she wasn't killed last night instead of just being bunged into a cupboard. Or perhaps Gwen rousing the household. Disturbed whoever it was. She was attacked before that. He could have strangled her as easily as lock her up. That makes sense. In any case, we haven't found out why Durant was killed. There are only two main motives, you know. Hatred or gain. Well, hatred's out for a start. Everyone liked him. What about gain? Who gets his money? I don't know. Mrs. Durant, I suppose. Or Andrea. I can't think of anyone else. Now, please don't try and tell me either of them killed him. Well, of course not. But someone could gain indirectly. I see what the superintendent means. Well, supposing someone, anyone, would benefit through Mrs. Durant or the daughter coming into a fortune. Why well, am beginning to follow? You mean some man in either Mrs. Durant's life or Andrea's? Yes. But it isn't time yet. The will hasn't been proved. And when it is, someone's going to get killed. The second half of that crime. Must be as neat. Hmm. Yes, but that still doesn't explain what happened last night. Simmons here. Oh, we'll be right over. We've got your cigarette smoker, Mrs. Knowles. You better come along and meet him. Come in. Sit down. Now you go in there, Grant, and tell the superintendent anything he wants to know. All right? Why, it's Whistler Grant. Morning, Mrs. Knowles. Nice weather we're having. You recognize Mrs. Knowles? Oh, yes, sir. The lady see me working about the place. Any idea why you've been brought in? No, sir. I can't think of anything I may have done wrong. What's like would have been found out. <laughs> have you got a good memory? Well, it's called inconvenience, eh? Well, I'll take you back to the day before yesterday. Start about five in the afternoon and tell me your movements. Eh, uh, well, I was on the road from Folkestone. Got three days' work there. Mending sacks. Couple of quid. Then I gets uh, itchy as far as Chatfold. Goes into a shop there for some fags. Walks along the cliff looking for a dry doss, but it was still cold there, so I goes along to Farmer Gurney's and lays up in the rick. Next morning he gives me a job. That's where the Sarge found me. I've got a fag of your gun. Your favourite brand, aren't they? know everything. <laughs> I didn't know I was that famous. Keep on. Oh, thanks, Gov. You're all right. What does the name Durant mean to you? What, the top what lives down at the old rectory? Ah, oh, even me, he's good pals. Gives me a day's work now and again, working in the garden. Mrs. Knowles will tell you that. Never mind, Mrs. Knowles, you tell me. Now, think well before you answer this. When did you last see Mr. Durant? Oh, I can tell you that right off, Governor. Night of all last, I was walking along the cliff, and he comes past. He sings out, good night, Grant. I gives him good night, on he goes. And that was the last you've seen or heard of him? Yes, sir. Have you spoken to anyone since? No, sir. Except uh, Farmer Gurney, uh, first thing yesterday morning. Well, I'm much obliged, Grant. More than welcome, sir. We might have to bother you again. Always a pleasure, sir. My best respects to Mr. Durant. So long, all.
You didn't ask him why he stood on the cliffs and smoked two cigarettes at the exact spot where Mr. Durand went over. Quite. But why didn't you? Because I'd have to accept whatever he says. Also, he'd know he was under suspicion. But he isn't under suspicion, is he? He knows more than he says. For a split second, when I told him I knew his favorite brand of cigarettes, he was frightened. Now, off you go and see what you can find among the filing cabinets. Sir? Oh, what atrocious grammar. My card. I am calling on Miss Andrea Durant. Oh, I don't know if she's in. Then you'd better go and find out, hadn't you? <laughs> Good grief, Lassie, you're not an ingenue. I beg your pardon. I am Carrington Phelps of the Carrington Phelps Theatrical Agency, and I have seen enough ingenues to make me a vegetarian. And you, my dear Miss Durant, are no ingenue. Miss Durant is out. Oh, regrettable. Well, I shall have to wait. Are you free for Pento? Nearly all right. <laughs> I was just having a quick butcher's at your stilts. I've seen worse. Stay here and keep an eye on him. If there's anything he wants, he doesn't take it. A dreadful man's just arrived. Mm? A dreadful man's just arrived. He wants Andrea. Mm? He's a thoroughly nasty piece of work. Who is? This dreadful man that's just arrived that wants Andrea. What's he like? He's sort of loud, insolent. Andrea's out with Tony. And this bloke's waiting for her? Yes. I've got it all pretty well worked out, the motive for the murder of Durant. A second man should put in an appearance. Yes, the man who's been sending those letters. The other half. Meaning one murder is only the first half of a whole. Half of what? Half a revenge, half a fortune? Yes, that's the part of the puzzle that's missing. Oh, Colin, where have you heard this before? Listen. Shepherd's Hay. Oh, Susan, I know Shepherd's Hay when I hear it. Don't you know? You never could understand the tune. I've heard it so often. Sure, it's got something to do with the murder. Have you heard it recently? Mm, just now in the library. It was all coming quite clear, and that dreadful man came and drove it out of my mind. Dum, dum, da, dum, da, da. Ooh! Enter Red Riding Hood with a basket of cookies. Where are we expecting you? Oh, Captain Priscuit in the honor of the regiment. I beg your pardon? Split wheat boodle. <clears throat> I am Carrington Phelps. Oh, yes, Mr. Phelps. I know of your agency, of course. Uh, naturally, yes. And I take it you've also heard of a Mr. George Malcolm. Of course. He saw you do a bit in a dreadful show at the Critics. <laughs> he sent me to persuade you to meet him. <laughs> persuade, I can be. Oh, he was out in front. He really wants to meet me. Uh, put it down to the eccentricities of genius, my dear Miss Durant. He's thinking about you for the lead in his new show. Have you an agent? Uh, no, no. <laughs> well, you have now. We should be delighted to act for you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just happen to have a contract in my pocket. <laughs> you know, the usual laughable 10%. <laughs> so representation. Oh, what a lucky little girl you are. Of course, you won't sign. I certainly will. I thought you decided to chuckle this nonsense. After all my years of training and what it cost Daddy, he believed me even if you don't. I've heard that tune a dozen times. You say it isn't a popular tune? No, it's connected with one person. It's the link to the whole thing. Try to eliminate all the possible people. I am. It's just a blank wall. Because you can't associate the tune with a person or with a background? With a background. Somehow it seems all wrong to have heard it in this house and I can't think why. Oh, Louis. Did you, uh, did you find anything of any interest in the study? No, nothing at all. Well, I, I didn't think you would, my dear. James has no secrets from me. Now, why did I lie to her? I did it instinctively. Why? Because you didn't want her to know. By the tune. No, I didn't. Quite suddenly, I knew that she mustn't find out. That's it. That's the tune. That's what I've been trying to remember. But it's only... By 
Jove, Whistler Grant. Whistler Grant? Of course. He whistled it when he walked out of the police station. I've heard it before, though. It's an old folk song, I think. Gosh, you're clever. Come on. Downstairs in the study, there's a thing that plays it. A thing? Yes, you know, I, I want it. Oh, um, well, come and look. Wait. I think there's a smut on the end of your nose. It wasn't because I think we're silly to break up. You realize that, don't you? And we wouldn't want to be together again for all the tea in China, would we? I happen to know an author who needs that secretary very badly. Go on. Of course, you realize you're doing this entirely against my wishes. Yes, I realize. You can't have everything you want. Oh, you'll feel marvelous when you see her name in lights. Well, I know I'd like to see your name. Come to filthy. Tony, are you going to witness this, or must I ask where? Colin, it's gone. Darling, what is it we're supposed to be looking for? A little gadget. The, oh, you know, the... Mouth organ. Mouth organ? No. Oh, tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Musical box? Yes. Well, it was here. I opened the lid and it played a tune. Now, I wonder what the association could be between the tramp and the musical box. Yes, and where it's gone. And who put Mrs. Durant in the cupboard? And why did Gwen come downstairs in the middle of the night for a plate of cold pie? Hmm. Well, the superintendent says he thinks Whistler Grant knows a great deal more than he can to say. I think we ought to call the police. No. Wait. And remember to ring me as soon as you get back to town. Yes. Thank you. And don't worry, dear boy, she's an ingenue. And nothing ever happens to ingenues. Tony, where are you going? To pack. <laughs> now, you don't cry badly, you know. Personally, I prefer a few more tears and a few less sniffs, but uh, it's not bad. Oh, come in, Gwen. Now, Gwen, what really woke you up last night? Come on, you can tell me. How do you mean, Miss Knowles? Well, you came down for that cold pie. I was hungry. Honest. Wasn't it really because you heard someone whistling? Indoors, all right. Oh, come on, Gwen, you can tell me that, surely. Of course, you know Mr. Durant was murdered. Didn't you know? No, sir. Honest, I didn't. Wasn't that pie for Whistler Grant? Two eight six three, please. What's he going to do? Hello, County Police. Mr. Colin Knowles here. Could I speak to Superintendent Simmons, please? Oh, Tony, are you leaving? Yes, I know when I'm beaten, Mrs. Durant. Oh, my dear, has Andrea upset you? It's all this stage nonsense. I'm afraid her father encouraged her. He paid for her flat and made her an allowance so she could stay in London. But she hasn't had much luck. It looks as though her luck's changed. There's a jumped-up spiv downstairs who calls himself an agent. He's got her a job. An agent? Yes. You don't want to hear about my troubles. Afraid I haven't been very much help to you. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Durant. Goodbye, Tony. Thank you very much for everything. I always have a battle about billing on principle. In our business, it pays to be a nuisance. Of course, I should get you some publicity. Probably have your flat burgled. Might even do it myself, you never know. Of course, one thing we shall need is a lot of the old um, <laughs> photographs, you know? Providing they're the right type, you can even make the Sunday papers. Amazing. I once knew a midget. I had a phone call from Mr. Knowles. He said he'd be in the study. Oh, yes. Won't you come in? <laughs> like rush hour at St. Pancras, isn't it? Gwen here has something to tell you, Superintendent. Oh? Well, what is it? Now, come along now. Nobody's going to eat you. He'll kill me if he knows I've let on. 
Isn't it all about what? I only done what Mrs. told me. I was to give him grub or money any time he'd come and asked. I'm scared of him, I am. Uh... Well, who's this you're talking about? Whistler Grant. Well, you've been living in this house, Mrs. Knowles. Is this true? I know Mr. Durant often gave him odd jobs and Mrs. Durant was kind to him, but... How often did he call? Oh, not often since I've been here. Once or twice, perhaps. Can you remember the dates? Oh, there's no reason to remember. Oh, yes. Of course. On two of the occasions, Mr. Durant was in London on business. Board meetings. What was his business? Paints, dyes, colour processes. He was chairman of several companies. Hmm. There's not much in common between paint manufacturers and tramps. Well, have you got a clue for me yet, Mr. Knowles? Yes. A very old French one. Cherchez la femme. Look for the lady, eh? Hmm. Now, I wonder... Find the lady. Well, the only lady connected with this is Mrs. Durant. And under this will, she only gets half the estate. The other half goes to the daughter, Andrea. Why should Mrs. Durant commit murder to half her fortune? Uh, what about the daughter, then, sir? No, I checked on her. She was in London at the material time. There's no evidence Durant had a girlfriend. And even if he had, she derived no benefit under his will. But another thing, in view of this will, I'm inclined to dismiss Whistler Grant from the inquiry. What possible connection could he have? <laughs> well, personally, sir, I never could see where he came into it. Hmm, that, of course, is the very reason we should look at him a little closer. But you say he's got a good record. Oh, yes, sir. Never no question of vagrancy. Never without visible means. Never made a nuisance of himself. Clean record all up and down the south coast. Yeah, almost too clean, isn't it? <laughs> He's a clever sort of lighter, too. A couple of years back, when my wife was making them new curtains, he shows her how to make her own dye. Get the right tint just to match the carpet, see? Yes? Go on. Oh, there's nothing to it, sir. It's just that it's a good dye. Oh, you can wash it as much as you like, never fade. Invent your sort of comb, that's what he is, sir. Use any means you like, but find Whistler Grant. I want him. this evening, Gwen. I'll manage for myself. Thank you, ma'am. Sure you'll be all right? Yes. Yes, thank you. There are lots of things I have to do. Well, there's nothing to show he's been here since we saw him at the station. No, sir. He hasn't been seen anywhere else, either. It's very unusual. Mm, it's also unusual for people to vanish into thin air. Anyhow, we'll keep after him. Yeah. Hold on a minute, sir. It's all right, Mrs. Durant. It's Simmons. What? What are you doing here? Well, much the same as you. Looking for Whistler Grant. He's not here. We don't know where he is. Why do you want him? Now, look, Mrs. Durant. Will you tell me something? You've gone to great lengths to help Grant. I see you've brought some food and drink in that basket. No doubt you've brought some money along, too. Now, won't you save us all a lot of trouble by telling me just what Whistler Grant means to you? He's my husband. I'd heard from several sources that he was dead. It was almost seven years since I'd heard from him. I was desperately lonely. So when James asked me to marry him, I agreed. I suppose it was wrong. I should have made certain. But one doesn't always do the right thing. Well, we won't go into that aspect of it just now. He turned up again in the person of Whistler Grant and threatened to expose you to Durant if you wouldn't pay. Well, you must have had a very unhappy time. I couldn't bear to hurt James. Now, look, I want you to promise me something. If Grant communicates with you in any way, you will immediately inform me you promise me that? Yes. I do promise you that. Come in. Are you sure it's 
Chair, please. Then you come. Ooh, you need a drink. Come and make the drinks, will you? All right. Nadia hasn't been in the place. I haven't been here for such a long time. Can't take her things off and relax. She's worrying. I'm afraid she's upset about that young man of hers. I wonder if we couldn't do something about it. She seems more scared than worried. I was watching her at the inquest. That open verdict was a shock to her. I know. I don't think she really accepted the murder theory until then. I have a hunch she's right to be scared. But I can't get nearer than a hunch. This is kind of you. I'm beginning to feel almost human. Have a drink. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you're going to think me an awful baby, but oh, I hate the thought of going back to my own flat. No, I go. Stay here with us. We've plenty of room. Of course you haven't. You've only got one bedroom. I know, but they're two perfectly good beds. We can have one each. And I don't in the least mind sleeping on the settee. Well, keep on trying. The man must be somewhere. <coughs> What's Folkestone? No sign of Whistler there. What's this? For two whole years, the man's been in this district in full view. Well, he has been known to disappear for months, sir. Well, he certainly picked the right time to do it again, after what we heard last night. Oh, this is a record of patents granted in connection with dyeing and colouring processes. Think of a lot of them, too. Hello. Listen to this. It's from Detective Sergeant Burt. Reed Grant, George M. Grant. Provisional patent for dyeing fabrics granted August the 14th, 1937. Grant, a chemist, subsequently took action for infringement against Global Colorings Limited. Chairman J. Durant. Lost case was made bankrupt and disappeared. Looks like your man. I'll say it does. Now we're on our skates, Bassett. Louis. I say, Louis. I do believe I've got it. Where's Andrea gone? Yes, She's not going to her own flat. No, I don't think so. Why? Right. You remember that letter? What letter? The one you showed the superintendent. The one that upset Mrs. Durant so much. Mm. How did it go? Half the, half the task is now complete. Tubber half must be as neat. Mm -hmm. You know, Louis, we've been right off the beam. Why? Half the task was the killing of Durant, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the other half? The killing of. Go on. Mrs. Durant. No, no, that's where we've come unstuck. Not Mrs. Durant. Miss Durant, Andrea. But why, Andrea? Because it's the only way the pieces will fit. Now, why was Mrs. Durant bunged in the cupboard? Well, to get out of the way. Wrong. She had to have an alibi for being caught in the study. She was in there with Whistler Grant when we all came downstairs. What were they doing? He was dunning her for money and Gwen was bringing him food. Now, the musical box. What happened to that? Who pinched it? Mrs. Durant pinched it. It was a link between her and that tramp and she heard you playing it, so she hid it. Well, what's all this got to do with Andrea? I'm coming to that. Durant's money, who gets it? Half goes to Mrs. Durant for her lifetime and half to Andrea for hers, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Mrs. Durant dies and Andrea gets the lot. But what happens if Andrea dies? What happens then? Well, Mrs. Durant gets... Tudder half. She gets the lot. If a man kills once, he'll kill twice. Someone's out to get Andrea. Evening, Joe. Oh, evening, Sergeant Bassett. Be on the lookout for someone? Always on the lookout for someone, Joe. Seen anyone around then? Uh, well, I, I see two people. Know who they are? I can't even guess, Joe. Who are they? Bert Jolly's dog and Widow Pardle's cat. <laughs> Eddie, you there to know you. Oh, you're rare smart. Uh, <laughs> I don't suppose you happen to see anything of Whistler Grant, then, have you? No, I ain't seen him for days. I tell you something, though. There's a chap in this year village. And he's got a new suit, and he ain't a man at all. What do you know about that, Sergeant? Well, Bessie? I don't know what to make of that, Joe. <laughs> Who is he? Farmer Gurney's scarecrow. And <laughs> <laughs> he's there again, isn't he? Ah, yes, ah. certainly, and he's there again. <laughs> Here, wait a minute. I, uh, I, We're taking a little uh, walk. What? No, I ain't walking with no coffers. Give me a bad name. Oh, no. Come on. You're going to show me Farmer Gurney's scarecrow. All right, lads, bring it in here. 
Farmer Gurney say anything when you took it? He wasn't too pleased about it, Sergeant. No, he don't like blue bottles, he don't. <laughs> he didn't say he'd seen anything in Whistler, did he? No. Uh, well, you see anything familiar about it? Well, I've seen that jacket somewhere. This here patch seems familiar. I tell you, that there's Whistler Grant's jacket. Hello? Who? This is Andrew speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Phelps. Oh, that'll be lovely. Where? No, I don't know it. Just said, and I'll write it down. Right, I've got that. Oh, what time? 8.30. Right, I'll be there. Bye. Mm. Good news? Tonight, tonight. I'm meeting Mr. Malcolm. Clarence oh. Phelps has arranged it. Oh, I must go and change. Bye. Oh, Colin. She's going out. Who is? Andrea. Her agent phoned. He's staying up to meet Mr. Malcolm. Say, do you think it's all right? Well, I don't suppose she's likely to be attacked in public. The only real danger spots her own flat, and she's keeping away from there. I suppose so. Anyway, Whistler Grant's bound to be arrested soon. All the potatoes. Gotcha, me beauty. See that? Looks like a capital R cut out of a newspaper. That's exactly what it is. Here's another. Small S this time. Now we know who sent that letter to Mrs. Durant. Hello, what's this? Feels like a five pound note. Whew. Hello? Get me Superintendent Simmons, Scotland Yard. Look a bit slippy. Car park ticket dated February the 6th in respect of a motor vehicle number... Hello? Superintendent Simmons? Bassett here, sir. Something to report. Go ahead, Bassett. Very interesting. What's the registered number? DXE14. Of course, it may have been someone who gave him a lift. Anyhow, I'll check. Capital R, small s. Well, look, see if you can find some more. And see you don't lose them. Detective Sergeant Bert. Bertie, listen. Get me the name and address of the registered owner of car number DXE14. You're being perfectly ridiculous, both of you. Now, look, we're only thinking of your safety. Look, Colin, dear, you're a very good writer of detective fiction. Hmm? Your theory about Whistler Grant trying to murder me is most ingenious, but uh, I don't think you'll make the attempt in the presence of my agent. That would be too absurd. Oh, cheer up. You're both a couple of darlings and I adore you, but... Uh... <laughs> well, really. <laughs> we oughtn't to have let her go. What can we do? Lock her in the bedroom? Well, I suppose we're being silly about it, but I can't get rid of the idea that she's walking into a trap. No, I feel that too. I'd like to hand the whole thing over to Simmons, but it sounds so silly. There's absolutely nothing for the police to go on. at least half an hour late. I was early, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Would you like a drink now, or shall we wait for Mr. Malcolm to buy them? Let's wait, shall we? Oh, there's a good girl. You know, personally, I find Malcolm a bit of an old bore, but, well, what does it matter as long as he's got the lolly? The, 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 the desire to make you a star. What you borrow? Yes, there is it is. Where is she? What do you mean? I've just seen that spiv agent, and I understand you're harboring Miss Durand. What do you mean, harboring? I've been haunting her flat for days. If she doesn't want to see me again, why doesn't she say so? Oh, but she does. She's devoted to you. And why is she hiding here? What's she afraid of? Well, we persuaded her to stay with us for a while. For her own safety. Look, there's something you ought to know. We've reason to believe that the man who killed her father may try to kill her. Have you any idea who it is? Yes. Yes, we have. It's somebody the police are looking for. Go 
Good evening, Mr. Malcolm. I heard you coming, sir. Good evening. Haven't seen you lately, sir. You been away? Yes, just one of my little business trips. Got any of my cigarettes there? Always got a few packets here for you, Mr. Malcolm. Can't always get these honey flakes, sir. Thank you. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. Malcolm, <laughs> I've got him taped. He eats out of my hand. How do you do, Phelps? Oh, good evening, sir. I know you well by sight, Mr. Durant. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Do you know, I think we can dispense with Mr. Phelps. He's a very busy man. And I've got to tell you the story of this play. Run along, Phelps. Oh, this happens to be a slack evening. Then make the most of it, my dear fellow. <coughs> that is the first time I've ever been done out of a free drink by an ingenue, my hat. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you want a tip? I'll give you one. Never trust an ingenue. Good night. I'm sorry I had to get rid of him. But you know, I really have got some plans for you. But unfortunately, some agents find it rather difficult to differentiate between plans and contracts. Now, what can I get you to drink? Oh, well, I don't really drink very much. But this is a celebration. Champagne cocktails, eh? Oh, yes, please. Good. George. Sir? Two champagne cocktails. Sir, sir. I'm rather grieved to hear about your father. Do you know, we knew each other some years ago. Oh, really? He never told me. Yes, we did some business together. He made quite a lot of money out of me. And now I hope to make quite a lot of money out of you. So she's been staying here with us rather than run the risk of being alone in her own flat. Well, I'll be frank with you, Mr. Knowles. Whistler Grant has vanished. We're keeping the net out for him, but so far he's still clear. Is Mr. Ant with you now? No, she's out. She's out with her agent. She's meeting a chap called George Malcolm. He's offering her a part in a play, I think. Oh, sounds all right. Any idea where they've gone? Oh, half a tick. Where's she gone? I don't know. She didn't say. Oh, wait a minute. She's tore off the leaf, but... I think I can just make it out. V E R O N I Q U E. Veronique, right? Uh, Greek Street. Quite a nice little place. Look, why don't you pop round there and keep an eye on her? That's the story of the play. As you can see, the girl has to die, otherwise the plot fails altogether. Mr. Malcolm, is it necessary for it to look like suicide? I think that takes all the sympathy away from the character. I see your point, of course. But if we change the ending, then the murderer will have to disappear altogether. Change his identity entirely. Become someone else. Oh, that's impossible. No one could do that. Couldn't they, Mr. Durant? Are you sure? I'm not sure a murderer couldn't. Let's go somewhere else where it's quieter. We'll continue the discussion there. Well, if you get your hat, I'll meet you. Simmons here. Yes. Car number DXE14. Registered owner, George Malcolm, theatrical manager. Bertie, we've got him. George Malcolm Grant, one-time chemist, later known as Whistler Grant. I know just where to put my hands on him. My hat, Joe, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Malcolm. Why are you whistling that tune? I don't know, sir. It just came into my head. Oh, I get it. It's Mr. Malcolm's favourite tune. Mr. Malcolm? Mr. Malcolm. Yes? Welcome, Grant. I arrest you for the willful murder of James Durant. <laughs> Louis! Oh, in the future, stick to writing. So much safer. 